Hi everyone, it's a cold wintry day in Toronto and I went out to Metro. I went to get some basics, just basics. So I got some tins of beans, baked beans for $2.99 each. I got some uh, pasta for $3.99, some cooking oil which was $6.99. I needed some fractionated coconut oil for my essential oils. That was $6.99. And I got some pasta. So just these few things all together came to $31.45. Then there was HST, which is 13% in Canada. And that came to $32.23. So that's for two three, four, five, six, seven items. Just seven items, just imagine. Now, if you're earning minimum wage, that doesn't go very far, does it, in Canada? So, anyway, they say come here for a better life, everything is better, better opportunities, retrain, requalify, and then you have to deal with the Americans. Now, when you deal with the Americans, you have to learn to speak their language. So apparently the way that we grew up and the way we talk is not good enough. So I've learned from them. And I say, how can I help you? They also say, how can I help you? But you have to say, I'm sorry that didn't work out. Yes, it's our fault. I'm sorry you didn't get what you want. Yes, it's our fault. Everything's always our fault. So. Slowly, slowly, things are changing. They're starting to realize that not everything is our fault. If there's a hurricane and a tornado somewhere and the package is late, it's not our fault. If there's a war somewhere and prices are going up because of the war, like I had to pay so much for just those products, it's not our fault. Now in Canada, they're not making, they're not giving out plastic bags at some of the grocery stores. So I take mine with me. But I used to use those plastic bags to put my garbage in. So that's one extra expense for me because now I can't just go to the grocery store and buy my groceries and use that for my garbage. Now I have to buy actual garbage bags to put the garbage in that I can dispose of. So there's pluses and minuses to everything. In Africa, when we lived in Africa, we had a compost tea in the backyard, in the garden. So any scraps, any leftovers, anything that, you know, banana peels, onion peels, we used to take that and put it in that compost heap. And then that compost heap used to be used for manure, for the flowers. So when you live in a condo, you don't have that. So I have some very nice plants. When I need to repot them, I have to go to the nursery, I buy the soil. One time I thought I would just use potting soil, just, uh, for, you know, use the soil from the earth. And I did that and the plant died. It got all worms and everything and it died. So you can't just take soil from outside and put it in your pots. You have to buy the treated soil and you have to change it every two, three years. So these are the things you learn when you come to Canada. There are lots of things that are the same and there are lots of things that are different and you have to be aware of those things. And also here they say it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. So I had to go for training. This started at TD. So people were complaining about the way I talked. So my manager at that time, he sent me for lessons to learn how to talk to the Americans, presentation skills. So I did that and then now I took John Maxwell to learn how to speak to the Americans because they also have their own language. So when we in Zimbabwe, we just talk. We don't care what you say, how you say it, all this. We don't have all this. But yeah, we learned. I learned. And then when they say, hi, Linda, I say, my name is not Berlin. My name is not Linda. My name is Berlinda. And then they say, oh, okay. I say, it's very important. My name is very important, just like everybody else's name. Because if you get a call back on me, you must know it's my name. 
So you learn all these things. And then you also get the military. So the military, they say, oh, I am in the military and this is disgusting how you treated me. And then I tell them, like, these are limitations. This is what I can do. This is what I can't do. So we get a lot of calls in the military. A lot, a lot. I get a lot of calls, a lot of chats. All the military, American military. So I have to learn how to deal with them also. So when we worked on Klana, when we ended our calls and chats and all that, we had to say, thank you for your service to America. If I can be of support with anything else, please let me know. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We'd be happy to be of service with you. You know, there's that British show, Are You Being Served? And we used to sit and laugh when we were growing up. But that's exactly how life is. You look at these movies and you think they're a joke, but they're not. That's actually how life is when you come to North America. People are, you don't just be yourself. There's nothing like that. Everything you have to learn, how to deal with them, how to serve them, what they like, how they want things. So it's very interesting. And it's very interesting for me because, you know, I worked in banking. I was an executive assistant then I was a project coordinator. And I did some project management. I managed some projects. And then I couldn't get work, couldn't get work because of this harassment with Credit Suisse. And then HSBC told me, you have to call the police. I told them, I told the police, they said, no, you have to call them from here and tell them what's happening. I called the police, then HSBC wouldn't confirm anything. But they, somebody there must have told them because they reprimanded them. They told them, this mustn't happen. She doesn't deserve to be harassed like this. And they came here to my condo to tell me. So now look what's happening with Credit Suisse. See, they even killed somebody there was some kind of scandal and they had people followed and tracked and all that. And now look what's happening to the banks. So it's better to do the right thing, you know, like do the right thing. Think about would you like, would you do that to your own family, your friends? And if you would do somebody down like that, then you're not a true friend. You're not a true family. I've had to deal with everything on my own, but I've got people that stay in touch with me from time to time. So, I'm lucky I'm not all alone. It's a, a difficult journey when you come here. It's not easy and the regulations keep changing. You have to be prepared to do ongoing learning, ongoing development, and you have to be prepared. Like I, even my mom says to me and I told her my voice has changed because I'm talking the whole day and she said, yeah, your voice has changed. So. Unfortunately, that's one of those things because we don't get a break in our work. With other jobs, you walk around, you do the filing, you come back, you get a coffee when you want, you talk to people. No, you're not on the phone the whole day and on the chats the whole day. That's all you, I do in my job. Chats and phones, chats and phones. Before I had emails, now we don't have emails anymore either. And with the downsizing, there's only 24 of us left. So that's a very small amount of people to be on that kind of a role. So we're a small team, but we're close and we help each other and we learn. Every day I learn. Every day there's something I didn't do quite right or I should have done differently or I did something wrong. So I learn and I adjust and I carry on. And that's what you have to do here. Now I don't have uh, money, so I only buy the basics, whatever I need. I don't buy sweets and chocolates. Once in a month, I might buy a packet of potato crisps. Um, I buy orange juice because I need it for my health. But other things I don't buy. I just get the basics, whatever I need, and that's it. And all these millionaires, all of these people that met at the World Economic Forum saying, Oh yes, this great reset is going to be good. All their stocks are going to tank and all of the millionaires are not going to be millionaires very long. There were many of us in the church, including me, that told Pope Francis not to support this great reset. Many of the conservatives, bishops and archbishops and cardinals did not support it. So you have to also know when to 
make your own decisions. And sometimes that means standing up to the priests, the nuns, the religious, the political leaders. You have to know when to do it. And I look back and I look at Robert Mugabe and I look at Nelson Mandela. I'm proud of them for saying, we regret it. We regret those years that our lives were wasted in jail. It takes courage to do that, to say that. So many wasted years. And that's how I feel about my life in Canada. So what if I've got all these degrees and I can't use them? I'm proud that I accomplished them. It took resilience, it took fortitude. I learned a lot, I use it to help others. But my salary is not going up. My wages are not going up. I'm not earning what I want to earn. So to me, that's a waste of a life. I've invested in people, I've helped people, I've mentored people, and yet I'm not getting those opportunities to earn the money that I want to earn. And everybody wants that, don't kid yourself. People want to earn well. That's why we study, that's why we train, that's why we go to school, that's why we work hard. Because at the end of the day, you put in the work, you want to get the financial rewards. You want to own your home, you want to travel. Some people want to own their own planes. Some people want to own their own homes. I also want to own my own home. I also want to be able to travel first class. I had my own company for a short time with Primerica and I was doing well. But I also know my limitations. I can't go out in the cold. I can't be catching the bus late at night to go into people's homes and I'm not comfortable with it. So I'm just hoping and praying that things get better because the way this war is going and the way things are going on, life is becoming very hard. And now with this medical assistance in dying it's a very very tragic situation very tragic there are no safeguards in place and it's not a nice feeling to be over 50 if you're under 50 and you're still earning minimum wage and you're still taking survival jobs and you're saying let me take a contract hopefully it will turn permanent that's one thing but when you hit 50 and you've got three degrees and a diploma and you've studied and you've been in executive roles and you have so much to offer and you're not getting the breaks. They say it makes the heart bitter. Thankfully, my heart is not bitter, but it's frustrating to be in that position. So anyway, let's see what happens. Just a few things, just a few basic things. That's how much it costs.